no one seems to have invented the idea of saying, this can't go on. I'm going to report you. Who is your boss? <laughs> Everybody's going to watch to the finish of that. That is just incredible. And, and Daniel Ellsberg is one of the most incredible heroes. Of course, what we have then is Daniel realizing that it's got to be him, right? Yes. Right? Um, and That's then a we... wonderful film, Kathy. Uh, really, congratulations for doing that. Thank you. But it's not just Daniel. And then we jump to Nozomi with that famous quotation, first they came for, etc. Yes. She says that. And then we go to John Pilger, who says, and now Julian, Julian Assange and WikiLeaks. There was massive demonstrations here in support of Julian at the time that this Bradley Manning thing happened because everybody got behind the First Amendment, that fundamental idea that Daniel is explaining. There just has to be whistleblowers. There just has to be. And the horror of Vietnam, the, the meaninglessness of it that went on, the pointlessness of it for seven more years after they realised, you know, and it was only a few people up the top calling all the shots. I mean, we had to break this system. And the greatest whistleblower, I suppose, since Ellsberg was Chelsea Manning. And then Edward Snowden. And the great thing that came along was the platform that would actually publish what they were revealing to the world. The yes. common interest, public interest, of vital importance to whole populations. It was a, a shield against you know, almost a century of information operations. Companies like SCL, Cambridge Analytica, very much alive today around the world, and WikiLeaks is the shield. Yes. That's why I said we have to make them grow bigger than ever at the moment because there has been the rise of the infiltrators in terms of information operations. They hit social media starting in 2013, but really coming into full swing around 2016. They're very, very influential, incredibly influential in the Trump election. They were running the campaign and the Leave campaign for Brexit. You know, all this personalized behavioral micro-targeting, it is called, which is based on mass surveillance and yes. dupery and dupery for people to give over more information about themselves and what they are realizing to show their vulnerabilities. And this horrendous non-democratic process of, of targeting the most vulnerable and gullible people in the electorate to get their vote. This insidious poisoning of the grassroots has been happening uh, since they decided to get into, you know, the shadow government becomes a university sector, together merges to become deep state, right, private entity, uh, uh, and then gets into the business of uh, selling their services to elections. And we're staffed, you know. They, they actually uh, looked after the um, PR campaign of the Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia. Yeah. You no, know, he's a reformer. That was their campaign. And yeah. they were working in Brazil and China as well. These are two topics that you're an expert in, Julian Assange and um, sort of Cambridge Analytica. Uh... Well, it's no accident because I see them as polar opposites. Oh, yeah, that was, that was my question also. Why, why, why the two topics? Um... Keep, keep your enemies closer. Enemy to truth. They inject, they inject lies into the bloodstream of the internet. Chris Wiley told us, Wiki made it clear. They inject truth. Simple, right? Black, black and white, if you like. It's as simple as that. Know your enemy. Know the insidious thing, uh, the, the power of propaganda as it has become today. Uh, we have to enforce the power of truth. That's the meaning of our movement, as well as as, as rescuing the, you know, the the person responsible for for building this platform that enabled whole populations to know the truth. Uh, when